and welcome to our online discussions. Before watching the video, I only have two simple requests for you. First is to get a paper or a notebook and jot down all the important ideas that you need to know. Second is to focus. Happy learning! Let's proceed to the discussion of week 3. So for week 3, we're going to discuss Rizal's National Consciousness. So for the overview of our lesson, we have for Section 1, Higher Education of Rizal. Section 2, Rizal's Life Abroad. Section 3, the, the Propaganda Movement and La Solidaridad. Section 4, In the Eyes of No Limit Angere. For Section 1, Higher Education of Rizal. So the execution of the three martyr priests, Mariano Gomez, Jacinto Zamora, and Jose Burgos, or collectively known as Gumburza, on February 17, 1872, left Pasiano, Jose's brother, deeply moved and angered by the brutality of the Spanish colonial government. As we all know, Pasiano is very close to Father Burgos, and Nangyari ang, garote sa, nangyari ang garote sa Gumbursa dahil sa nangyaring Cavite mutiny or ang pag-aalsa sa, sa Cavite. Pinagbintangan ng mga Espanyol ang Gumbursa na naging traidor o naging sangkot sa Cavite mutiny kung kaya't sila ay pinatawan ng garote. Walang paglilitis, walang maayos na, na judgment, agad-agad ay ipinapatay ang Gumbursa. Kung kaya't gan ganun na lamang ang, ang naramdaman ni Pasyano nung nakita niya ng personal na ginarote ang Gumbursa. So he expressed his frustrations to the younger Jose, making him even at a very young age aware of the atrocities of the Spanish colonizers. The nationalist sensibilities of Rizal were steered after the execution of Gumbursa. Simula noon, simula nung nakita niya yun, habang lumalaki siya, namulat siya sa kalupitan ng mga Espanyol. So he, he even dedicated his second novel, The El Filibusterismo, to the three priests. Yeah, and this also opened Rizal's eyes to the true conditions of the Philippine society under the Spaniards. So originally, Francisco Mercado or his father wanted Jose to study at Colegio de San Juan de Letran, but Pasiano convinced him to let Jose study instead at Ateneo Municipal de Manila. So with the help of Manuel Ceres Burgos, the nephew of Pris Burgos, na connected kay Pasiano, Rizal was admitted to Ateneo despite objections from some school administrators. So the teaching in Ateneo is very advanced. Why? The classes were divided into groups of interns and externs. So syempre, kasama sa externs, si Rizal. Sa externs, nabibilang yung, or ito yung tinatawag nating Roman M Empire, dito nabibilang yung mga taong nasa border. At Nasa Carthaginian Empire naman si Rizal or nandito yung mga non-borders. So each group have five levels. So kumbaga sa atin ay merong top five or first honor, second honor, third honor, fourth honor, fifth honor. So that's how they address that emperor being the first honor. Sinundan ng tribune, sinundan ng decurion, centurion, at ng standard bearer. So ang emperor, ang first honor, ang consider na the best student in class. At yung mga sumunod, second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best. That's how they addressed it. So yan, syempre si Rizal, dun nga siya kabilang sa Cartesian Empire. And during the start of the term, he was ranked at the bottom of the class. He kept on getting promoted so that by the end of the by the end of his first month, he already had attained the rank of emperor. So dahil nga nasa lowest siya, sa start ng term, ang ginagawa ni Rizal, nag pumupunta siya, during, during noon breaks, pumunta, pumupunta siya sa Santa Isabel College to have his private uh, class or review para makahabol sa klase. So from there, Rizal continuously exemplified scholastic excellence such that he was the pride of the Jesuits as he received the highest grades in almost all his classes. So on March 23, 1877, he obtained the degree Bachelor in Artes and was awarded Sobra Saliente or Outstanding or Excellent 
During his stay in Ateneo, he wrote poems and crafted sculptures. One of these sculptures was the Sagrado Corazon de Jesus or the Sacred Heart of Jesus upon the request of his teacher. So in Ateneo, he was able to, to craft this sculpture that you see on the picture. He was 14 back then. Ginawa niya. So after finishing his studies at Ateneo, Rizal pursued further studies. This was strongly opposed by his mother for she believed that gaining more knowledge would only endanger his life. However, with the support of his father and brother, Rizal went to, on to, the, to attend the University of Santo Tomas to study philosophy. So after a year, he shifted to study medicine where he was allowed to take up preparatory medical courses and regular first-year medical courses at the same time. So, pinipigilan na ni, ni, ni Doña Loleng o ng kanyang nanay si Rizal na mag-aral kasi alam niya na, na malapit sa kapahamakan ang talino ng kanyang anak. Pero, pinakita naman ang, ang, ng ama niya ang suporta sa kanya kung kaya't lalo siyang napusigay mag-aral. Uh, sabi ng ibang historians, iilan daw yung mga taong pinapayagan noon na pagsabayin yung preparatory medical courses at regular first year medical course sa pag-aaral at si Jose Rizal ay isa sa mga pinayagan. Ang nakikita nyo sa picture ay ang USD kung saan nag-aaral si Rizal, na, si Rizal ng philosophy. So Rizal's academic life in USD was full of controversies and hardships compared to his time in Ateneo. So it was reported on various occasions that Rizal had unhappy days at USD for three reasons. First, that the Dominican professors were hostile to him. Second is, Filipinos were vulnerable to racial discrimination. And lastly, the method of instruction was repressive and dated. So, marami ding mga historians ang nagsasabi, mahigpit kay Rizal ang mga Dominican professors lagi siyang binubuli alongside with the classmates na lagi din siyang binubuli. Dahil, bukod sa physically, iba ang mga Filipino sa kanila, iba ang tsura ng mga Filipino, mas maliit that time may infer inferior ang feeling ng mga Filipino. Kasi nga, mga Spanyol ang mas makapangyarihan sa kanila noon. Pero, itong si Rizal, as some of the historians say, said, hindi siya nagpapatalo, lumalaban siya sa pangbubuli sa kanya. And yun, repressive and dated yung instruction sa UST. So, in 1882, Jose finished his fourth year in UST and left the Philippines bound for Spain, where he continued his study of medicine at the Universidad Central de Madrid. He obtained multiple degrees in philosophy, letters, and medicines in medicine in 1884. But if you're wondering if all of Rizal's grade were sobra saliente or excellent, outstanding, nagkakamali kayo. Ano, meron din si Rizal na ibang, na ibang grades na pasado. Pasado lama. Rizal's sudden decision to leave the Philippines was compounded with speculations. According to some account, accounts, Rizal left the country as part of a secret mission co-orchestrated by his brother to observe life abroad and initiate a campaign for reforms in the Philippines. There, there are also some historians who believe that Pasiano is really eyeing for Rizal na siya talaga yung lumaban para sa mga Spanyol kasi siya yung nagpupush kay Jose Rizal na mag-aral ka sa ibang bansa para mailigtas mo ang Pilipinas. Yan. So, napakalaki ng role ni Pasiano sa naging desisyon ni Jose Rizal na mag-aral at magpakadalubhasa sa ibang bansa at bumalik muli sa Pilipinas para sa kalagayan ng Pilipinas. So, we'll now proceed to section 2 or his, his life abroad. So in 1882 after finishing his fourth year at the university at the University of Santo Tomas Rizal left for Spain to continue his studies there. So according to some accounts Rizal left the Philippines as part of a secret pact with his brother Pasiano. So yun nga since uh, si Pasiano nagpo-push sa kanya na pumunta ng ibang bansa mag-aral magpakadulubhasa para para sa kapakanan ng Pilipinas, umalis si Rizal nang sila lamang ding dalawa ang may alam. Even ang kanilang parents, even si Leonor Rivera na noon ay karelasyon ni Jose Rizal, hindi niya alam na umalis si Rizal sa Pilipinas para doon mag-aral at magsulat ng libro. Ano, so, in Rizal's journey, he was able to establish connections that facilitated the campaign for reforms in the Philippines while trying to conceptualize his book. So, pagdating ni Jose Rizal sa, sa, sa Spain, napakarami niyang naranasan 
na hindi niya nararanasan sa Pilipinas, nalalapos mo sa nararamdaman niya sa kagustuhan niyang iligtas ang Pilipinas sa nararanasan nito noong panahon na yun. So, Rizal's trip was primarily funded by Pasiano who regularly sent him money for his upkeep. So, when the agrarian crisis in Calamba took place, Rizal's allowance was delayed and he had to pawn the diamond ring his sister, Saturnina, gave him before he left for, for Spain. So, pagpunta ni Jose Rizal doon sa, sa, sa Spain, nag-aaral siya, ganyan. And then, hindi naging madali para kay Pasyano na magpadala ng pera. Hindi lang yun sa kanyang bulsa galing. Galing yun sa samahan na pinangungunahan ni Pasyano. At simula nung nagkaroon ng encomienda na nagpahirap sa sa mga tao nun sa Kalamba. Na, at nawalan sila ng lupa, pinali sa mga tahanan nila, nahirapan si Pasyano humanap ng pera para, ipagpad, para ipadala kay Jose Rizal. So sa kahirapan ni Rizal, sa hirap na dinanas ni Rizal doon sa ibang bansa, napilitan siyang isang la yung diamond ring na binigay ni Saturnina bago siya umalis. So yun, uh, may iba ding nagsabi na he even had to cut his living living costs which meant skipping meals and eating toyo or dried fish and Rizal also had problems in paying rent which forced him to move from one place to another so mar- uh, sa history din maraming natuturo marami sa mga tinirahan ni Jose Rizal ay buhay pa rin hanggang ngayon pero hindi nakapare hindi nakaparehong establishment to but marami nagsasabi na nagpalipat-lipat si Jose Rizal nang tinitirahan kasi nga hindi na siya makabayad sa renta pero nagtipid man si Jose Rizal hindi ko alam kung napapansin nyo kung bakit napakaraming picture ni Jose Rizal na hindi tayo nagkukulang sa resources niya. Trivia lang, mahilig si Jose Rizal magpa-picture. So kahit nagtitipid siya sa allowance, lagi siya natabi ng pera para magkaroon siya ng picture. Nevertheless, Rizal never lost focus on his mission. So kahit napakahirap ng pinagdaanan niya, laging nakatanim sa puso at isipan ni Jose Rizal bakit siya nag-aaral doon. On his first visit to a foreign country, he witnessed how people in Singapore displayed a carefree attitude in whatever they did. So this was because their rights as citizens were respected and their authorities were not abusive. So he also traveled to Ceylon or what we call now as Sri Lanka, Egypt, Italy, and France before finally arriving in Barcelona, Spain. Sa lahat ng nadaanan niya na lugar na yun, napansin niya na yung karapatan ng mga tao ay ginagalang at nakita niya at o naramdaman niya ang sense ng libera- liberalismo na hindi nararamdaman sa Pilipinas. Kung kaya't pagdating niya ng Spain, mas lalong nag-alab yung kagustuhan niya na iligtas yung inang bayan. Sorry, that's a uh, ty- typo. Hindi ko nabura ito. So, in Spain, Rizal regularly met with some of his former schoolmates from Ateneo Municipal and partially relieved his homesickness. So, he also wrote articles for a newspaper based in Manila, one of which was his first published essay, The El Amor patrio or love of country. He also spent his time growing his personal library that included books on the lives of the on the presidents of the United States and the history of the English Civil War. So, diba ang daming time ni Jose Rizal? Sana all. What you see in the picture is the El Amor Patrio or the Love of Country essay written by Rizal. In his collection of books, Rizal had two favorites. So, ang una ay yung Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe which is written on 1852 na tungkol sa evil and immortality of slavery. And the next one is The Wandering Jew by Eugene Su of 1844. So, this is about the Christian myth in literature which provoked Jesus on his way to the crucifixion. There, these two books made Rizal empathetic towards the less fortunate and reminded him of the unjust relationships between Filipinos and Spaniards. So from there, from there, after yung mabasa yung mga yun, it became Rizal's motivation to start drafting his own book. So aside from reading and writing, Rizal was also overwhelmed by the courage and camaraderie displayed by the Freemasonry. So the Freemasonry is the leading fraternal organization or brotherhood back then. No? So, it did not take long before Rizal joined the rank. Through the influence of his uncle Jose Alberto, who is also living in Spain and a Mason also, Rizal was given access to, to the Acacia Lodge of the Masonic Fraternity. So, sabi ni Reynold Fajardo, sa isang, isang Filipino historian, Rizal was not only a Mason. So, he was only one among the leaders of the revolutionary movement during the Spanish era who deserved to be called an international mason since he was a member of various masonic lodges in Spain, 
Germany, France, and possibly England. Maraming kinabibilangan na brotherhood si Rizal noong siya ay uh, naglalayag. The biggest contributor to Dr. Rizal's venture in writing was Dr. Maximo Viola. Viola, why? Kasi nga, since nagtitipid si Rizal, ano, kasi wala nang maipadala si Pasyano, kilang, kinailangan niya ng, ng taong tutulong sa kanya para may publish niya yung book. So, Maximo Viola helped in financing the publication of Rizal's first book, The No Limit Tangere, in 1887 with 2,000 initial copies. Copies were sent to Viola and to Rizal's friends in Spain, while others were shipped to the Philippines that reached the hands of the Governor General of the Philippines and the Archbishop of Manila. Rizal also met Don Pablo Ortiga y Rey, a former alcalde of Manila, whose house commonly served as meeting place for Filipino student students in Madrid. He soon joined the group Circulo Hispano Filipino, led by Juan Ataide. He also regularly convened with his Filipino friends from the Los Indios Bravos. that included renowned painters Juan Luna and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. Ang Circulo Hispano-Filipino ay isang samahan na nag, naglalayong maipahayag ng malaya ang dinaranas na paghihirap no ng mga Pilipino. Kasama ng grupong iyon, si Jose Rizal, si Juan Ataide, si Juan Luna, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, at si Don Pablo Ortiga Rey. Aside from what he's doing, Rizal also busied himself with learning different languages such as English, German, and French. So actually, Rizal is a polyglot speaking 22 languages. So despite his many engagements, Rizal still found time to, con to continue drafting his book. One of his greatest influence was Dr. Fyodor Hagor, or Jagor, a German scientist and traveler whom he met in Berlin. So Dr. Jagor's book inspired Rizal to do something to emphasize the, that education is the answer to the Philippines' current situation. So the, the book that Rizal is referring to is the the one written by Dr. Hagor, Travels in the Philippines. Pinablish ito sa Berlin noong 1873. Nakita ni Dr. Hagor or na-foretold niya ang downfall ng Spanish rule and the coming of the America to the Philippine shore. Natuwa si Rizal sa kinobservance ni Dr. Hagor kung kaya uh, naisip niya na baka edukasyon ang talagang solusyon sa sa sitwasyon ng Pilipinas ngay noon, nung, nung panahon na yun. Kung kaya mas lalo si Rizal nag-pursiging mag-aral. After the publication of No Limit Tanghere, Viola accompanied Rizal to Austria to finally meet Dr. Ferdinand Blumentritt. So sabi nga si Rizal ay medyo marunong or mauta kasi ginusto niyang makilala itong si Ferdinand Blumentritt. Si Ferdinand Blumentritt ay kinaibigan ni Rizal dahil siya ay eksperto sa etnografiyang Filipino at interesado siya sa Pilipinas. Ano, marami siyang naisulat na libro tungkol sa Pilipinas kahit hindi niya pa nararating ang Pilipinas noon. Simula nung nakilala ni, ni Jose Rizal, si Blumentritt, lagi siya nagpapadala ng sulat sa isa't isa at saka mga libro. And Brizal considered Blumentritt as a friend and as his mentor or advisor. So marami sa mga sinusulat, mga isinashare ni Jose Rizal sa kay Blumentritt ay personal na kalagayan niya at kalagayan ng Pilipinas kung kaya't pinagtitiwalaan niya si Blumentritt. After a few trips to Roma and other parts of Italy, Rizal returned to the Philippines to personally witness the impact of his novel. Dahil nga magkaibigan si, si Rizal at si Blumentritt, naipadala ni Rizal ang nolimitang hiri kay, kay Blumentritt, isinalin niya ito sa wikang aliman. Nagbigay din siya ng introduction sa pangalawang nobe nobela ni Jose Rizal na El Filibusterismo. Pero, bago iyon malathala, pinayuhan muna ni, ni Blumentritt si Rizal sa mga pwedeng mangyari pagkatapos niyang mailathala yung nobela. Sinulat din niya ang intro ng Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas ni Antonio Morga nang muli itong ipalathala ni Rizal ng may anotasyon niya. Makikilala niyo si Morga as we go along our lessons. In short, Blumentritt played a major role in honing Jose Rizal to be the national hero that we have. That's it for our discussion today. I hope you were able to understand our lessons. If not, you can always go back and replay the videos. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching. God bless.